Greetings travelers, and welcome to Skyrim. Like with all of their worlds, Bethesda handcrafted this province of Tamriel with innumerous details, either small stories told through nothing but the environment or small dungeons that tell tales that served no purpose but to build the world. As I travel through this land, stumbling upon such instances are an absolute joy, one I wish to share with others. So today, let's take a look at one such stop upon my journey, a hidden haven for the lawless of the land, invaded from within by creatures of the dark. Today, let's venture into the Liar's Retreat. But before we do, I must ask you to like the video and subscribe if you'd like to see more. You can also ring the bell to get notified so you never miss any videos like this. The YouTube algorithm is a powerful beast, an old god that must be sated by the sacrifice of likes and subscriptions. Help me grow in this power, so we may bring more people along in our adventure. One day I set out from Whiterun, making my way to the reclaimed Dwimmer City of Stone, Markarth. I traveled west along the main road, passing through Rorkstead before turning south and heading into the Reach. This is a land of beauty, the mountains that cut through it jagged and coarse, but covered in blankets of mist and cloud. I knew the hold to be occupied by Forsworn Raiders and other rad creatures if you are cultured like me and installed a bunch of mods. So I kept my eyes out and weapons drawn, not wishing to be ambushed along the road. As I made my way along the path hugging Broken Tower Redoubt, now crawling with goblins thanks to aforementioned mods, I noticed a torch lit in the distance so many paces off the main road. In the daylight, it was difficult to make out, and so I waited until nighttime to get a much more aesthetically pleasing shot for my eyeballs. My curiosity peaked. I said goodbye to my new goblinoid companions, making my way down the hill, drawn like a moth to the lantern light. At its source, marked by two braziers and a cairn stacked against the rock face, I found a wooden door carved into the mountain, roughly here on the map. This, as I was so politely told by the Bethesda gods, is the Liar's Retreat. That sounds pleasant, I thought. I shall go in and explore what is surely a den of depravity, and perhaps I shall even make some new friends. I, of course, did not. Inside, I was greeted by a most horrifying sight. Just in the cave, I walked down a short flight of stairs and found myself upon a balcony overlooking a somewhat makeshift mead hall furnished with benches and long tables, and even complete with a bar at its back. But this place, once filled with laughter and cheer, has now been stained by tragedy. Here several Falmers stood, out of place in such a location, towering over a scene of utter uproar. Roughly half a dozen bandits lay dead across the hall, their bodies tossed around the room, in a fallen chandelier, under tables and over chairs. One even met with a terrible fate, burned to death under the broken remnants of one of the long tables. A tavern wench lays dead hunched over the bar, a Falmer axe buried into the wood next to her head. Not even the bard in this imitation of an inn was spared. Blood was splattered across the walls with gore resting on the floor, while two heads were impaled upon pikes to the left of the room. Horrifyingly, a bloodied ribcage has fallen near the bar, suggesting that one of these bandits was flayed and dismembered. I hold little sympathy for highwaymen such as these, but what a horrible end to be met with. Behind the meat hall and bar, I found a well-stocked kitchen mostly in good shape aside from the occupation of a falmer and some bloodstains splattered across the wall. Though the optimistic part of me wished it was from some cattle slaughtered for a feast, the more practical part of me knew that this was unlikely. To the left of the meat hall, I came across a hallway pocked with three rooms. Within one stood a lone falmer, ominously lit from the chandelier above. Several other bandits lie dead in or around these beds, suggesting that they met their fate whilst dreaming or quickly upon being awoken. They must have been amongst the first to die in this conflict. It seems unlikely that anyone could sleep through the battle that must have taken place in the mead hall. The furthest room was clearly a master bedroom of sorts, smaller than the others but with only a single bed inside. A chest rests in the corner alongside two bookshelves, the one still standing filled with trinkets, odds and ends, that sort of thing. A table is also placed next to the door, I'm sure to act as a desk of sorts, for whichever poor corpse called themselves the chief amongst these bandits. 
At the opposite end of the hallway, I found a locked door, and from within I heard the faint whispers of an Orismer. He must have fled back into this room early on into the fighting, deciding that his clan was no match for this Falmer incursion. I'm unsure how long he expected to be in here. All he had in the way of nourishment was some stamina potions and wine. Along with locking the door, he also barricaded the room using baskets of all things. As you can imagine, they were not very effective, and were pushed aside just from the simple force of me opening the door. The Orismer was also unhappy with this predicament, and had to be taken care of. No, you'll never take me alive! It was self-defense, I swear. As I moved further back into the retreat, it became evident what happened here. The masonry work of one of the back walls of the structure has been torn apart, revealing a cavern descending further into the mountain behind. Another bandit lay dead not far into the cave, perhaps brave enough to explore before coming upon the Falmer and being slain, or perhaps being chased back into the cavern and dying in their attempted escape. Another possibility is that they were captured and were being dragged back here, but fought back and were struck down, left to rot where they fell. Regardless, I pressed onward, curious as to what I would find in these passages. Before too long, I came upon a space covered in spider webs, home to one of Skyrim's large frostbite arachnids. I hate these creatures, truth be told. No spider should be this large, it is simply unnatural. Further along, there were other Falmer standing vigil over the caverns, but I started to hear the distant hum and rhythmic percussion of Dwimmer machinery. Of course, that makes sense. Some Dwimmer ruins must have been built into this cave system, and the Falmer eventually tunneled their way into the Liar's Retreat after hearing their debauchery. As I pressed on, I eventually came upon a room with two Falmer cages, guarded by just a single Falmer. One cage held only a corpse, whilst the other was occupied by two living bandits. The Falmer guard seems to regularly goad the bandits, but they do not rest idly awaiting their fate. No. With some subterfuge, they manage to unlock their cage and open its gate. Um, there. I got it. Let's go. Storming out to fight the Falmer. Alas, they were both quickly struck down. The academic within me had hoped that they would survive so I could hear of what exactly happened in the Liar's Retreat. But, who knows. Had they lived, I imagine they would have attacked me on sight. After dispatching the Falmer guard, I continued on. A short distance further into the caverns, I discovered more evidence of the Dwimmer ruins these Falmer must have come from, as walls and pillars started peeking through the tunnel's rocks. Within, I stumbled upon what I can only describe as some sort of shrine or altar, being attended to by what was obviously the Alpha amongst the Falmer, and one of his Charis pets. Just like the spiders, these things are much too large, and I wouldn't mind if they all just left for oblivion. On this table rests the corpse of a man named Rad, stabbed with a Falmer blade still sticking up from the table. Given his attire, I must assume that he was the bartender or cook for the retreat, perhaps even the proprietor of the establishment. Beside him rests a unique weapon of war, the Longhammer. As soon as I saw this weapon, as well as the name of its owner, it reminded me of another story I once heard. The tales of an adventuring party named Acquisitions Incorporated, a motley gang made up of members from other companies like Penny Arcade, PvP, and Wizards of the Coast, famous for their encounters within dungeons and dragons. In one of their serialized tales, the group descended into the Nine Hells to rescue one of their own, one Will Wheaton, where they found him alongside another prisoner named Rad Longhammer. Oh, dude, no, that would be totally rad. Speaking of, that's my name, Rad. <laughs> Rad. Rad Longhammer. Clearly Rad here was a fan of these tales, and adopted the name as part of his own identity. As I hefted the Longhammer from the altar, I noticed that it was remarkably light for a maul of its size. If I were to estimate, I would say that it swings roughly 30% faster than another weapon of its size. I'm just pulling that strangely exact number from thin air. Don't quote me on it. Rad no longer has any use for it, but I figure that it can still be put to good use, and so it swung to kill both the Falmer Alpha and his pet Charis. I hope Rad is peering down from Sovngarde in satisfaction. Having done all I could here at the Liar's Retreat, cleansing its halls of the Falmer Scourge, I made my way out of the dungeon, only to find that other bandits had returned from what I assumed to be misadventures of their own outside. Their chief, whom I suppose was not amongst the number killed here, 
calls out to Rad before they are shocked by the carnage laid out before them. Hey, Longhammer, set us up with a round of... What in oblivion happened in here? As their eyes rested upon me, the only living thing in a room of corpses, hauling the very recognizable weapon of their fallen comrade, it is understandable why they must have thought me responsible for the carnage. Alas, it also meant that I had to strike them down to escape with my own life. In the end, I assume it did more good than ill. They were just bandits after all. And with that, my journey into the Liar's Retreat came to an end. An intriguing story with little consequence on the rest of the outside world, but a satisfying prize hidden in its depths. This dungeon exemplifies the best sort of environmental storytelling present in worlds like Tamriel. You have to put the narrative here together yourself. Otherwise, it's just a cool little dungeon to explore. Tell me, what did you think of the Liar's Retreat? And do you know any other places I should go explore in Skyrim or other provinces of Tamriel? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, please remember to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you never miss out on any adventures like this. I have new lore, secrets, and easter egg videos coming every week, and I'd very much like for you to join me with all of them. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.